Hey everyone, let's take a look at number two on our sample exam. We're now to the multiple answer part, so I'm just gonna circle all the statements that are true. So we gotta find a bunch of traits and graph this function. So we it says here, find traits and graph the equation for a function g of x that vertically stretches this function by a factor of three and shifts it two units right. So here's my starting function, but I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna transform it. And I just have to think about what do I need to do to vertically stretch something by a factor of three? And what do I need to do to vertically, or not vertically, to shift something two units to the right? So we're gonna apply all of our, our transformations that we learned back in chapter three. So when you wanna stretch something, vertically stretch something, that means you're gonna multiply by three. Let me write the word multiply. But you're gonna do it outside of the grouping symbols. And I'll show you what I mean by that as I get going. But if, if you ever wanted to horizontally stretch or shrink something, you would do it inside the grouping symbols. And just so we're clear, when I say grouping symbols, I'm talking about these parentheses, right? So I'm going to multiply the three outside of all of those grouping symbols. Now, when you want to shift something to the right, so you're moving in a left-right motion, that's when you want to go ahead and you want to add, excuse me, subtract two. It's always counterintuitive. So subtract two units, or two, uh, I'll just say two, from inside the grouping symbols. All right, so anytime you wanna go horizontal, right, you're gonna do stuff inside the grouping symbols. Anytime you wanna do anything vertical, you're gonna do stuff outside of the grouping symbols. So let me erase some of my, my scratches here, my, my little writings, and let's go find this function. So, so I see one more little thing I need to erase. So g of x, what it would ultimately be is I would need to triple the y values for f of x, but I need to go ahead and shift everything two units to the right. So inside those grouping symbols, I'm going to subtract two. All right, so just so we're super clear on this, this three happens outside the grouping symbols and I'm multiplying. All right, and let me get a pink here. So I'm shifting two units right. It needs to be inside the grouping symbols, but it's always counterintuitive. Like you think going to the right would be positive, but it's actually x minus two that you want to put there. And that's because if you ever had x minus two equaling zero, if you added two, oops, let me go ahead and move that. If you added two to both sides, then you would get a, a vertical shift, excuse me, a horizontal shift right of two units, right? So that's, that's why it's always counterintuitive. All right. So with that, let's go ahead and figure out what this new function would be. All right, so I'll leave the three here. Now, if I wanna do f of x minus two, well, we know f of x is this function here. So what we're gonna do is anytime, oops, excuse me, anytime I see an x, I'm about to substitute an x minus two. So I'll put an x minus two here, an x minus two here, and an x minus two here, and let's see what we get. So this is gonna be x minus two minus one. Then we're going to have x minus 2 minus 3, and this is going to be x minus 2 plus 2 squared. And I'm going to see how this all shakes out. So this is going to be 3, this is going to be x minus 3, this is going to be x minus 5, and this is actually going to be, uh, it's technically x, right, because minus 2 plus 2 zeroes out. So I'm just going to rewrite this as 3x squared times x minus 3 times x minus five. So there is the function that I'm being asked to graph, right? And again, that was chapter three. I believe this is section 3.5. I'll need to double check that, but I'm pretty sure it's section 3.5 that deals with the transformations of functions. All right, and now we're gonna apply stuff from chapter five so I can go ahead and graph all of this. All right, so let's start with domain. If I wanna start with domain, Anytime we have a function, if we want to look at domain, we have to look, do I have any fractions? Do I have any radicals? And do I have any logarithms? And the answer is no, no, and no. So then my domain is all real numbers. So I'm going to go ahead and circle this one, okay? Next thing it looks like, I need to get some x-intercepts. So whenever you want some x-intercepts, you need to let y equal 0. And so in this case, if we look at when is 3x squared times x minus 3 times x minus five equal to zero. Well, I'm gonna get when is x squared equal to zero, when is x minus three equal to zero, and when is x minus five equal to zero. So this is at zero, three, and five, but keep in mind you need to write these up as intercepts. So this is gonna be the ordered pair zero, zero, three, zero, and five, so, oops, that looks like 50, five, zero. All right, and let me just start 
separating these so we can start to see this. So let's see, where are they? Ah, here are my x-intercepts. The second statement is true. Great. Let's go find our y-intercept. Now, if I want a y-intercept, I'm going to go ahead and let x equal 0. So if I want g of 0, that will be 3 times, it looks like, 0 squared times 0 minus 3 and 0 minus 5. But I've got the zero product property. I'm multiplying a 0 into this, so that product will ultimately be 0. So my y-intercept as an ordered pair is 0, 0. There it is. All right, great. It looks like the next thing is end behavior. Let me just scroll down a bit, and I've got to figure out what arrows are happening here. All right, so let's take a look at g of x, which we knew was 3x squared times x minus 3 and x minus 5. Now, we're only ever interested in the highest degree terms. So I've got the x squared here. I've got an x here and an x here. And I do have that positive 3. So g of x is basically like 3x squared times x times x, which would have been 3x to the fourth. Now, because I have, and let me mark this, because I have an even power, all right, I know my arrows are going to go in the same direction. So let me put, this is telling me that the arrows go in the same direction because it's even. If it was odd, they go in opposite directions. So what that means is if they're in the same direction, it's not this option and it's not this option. So they're either both up or both down. And the way we decide is we look at that lead coefficient, which is 3. It happens to be positive. So this tells me that they are both up. And I'm going to go ahead and take this last option, okay? And then the last thing I think I'm going to need is this range. But for me, again, I always go with the graph first. I want to find the graph first, and then I get the range from it. So in this case, unlike the free response, here I'm giving you three graphs. So we, we need to figure out which of these three match. And I, I tend to start with my traits. So let's go up to the intercepts. I need 0, 0, 3, 0, and 5, 0. So let's look. Here, 0, 0 is not on the graph. That's not it. I see 0, 0 here. That's good. It looks like 3, 0 if I count those squares. And then 5, 0. That looks good. So if I look here at 0, 0, not on the graph. So this is not it. All right. So that's my graph. And as we go through that, we do see that both ends are up. Right. So that's all looking good. Everything's matching. I see my y-intercepts, my x-intercepts. But what I really need to figure out is the range. And now I have both arrows up. So I do know that there's going to be a positive infinity involved. But you can see... The positive infinity is in all of the possible answers, so that doesn't narrow it down. What I really need to do is figure out what my lowest value is. And if we look at our low, it's somewhere over here. yeah. And I want to take note that I don't have a down arrow, so my range is not going to be negative infinity to infinity. I need to figure out what that y value is. And just looking at my options, it's either negative 16.9 or it's negative 50.8. And I'm going to use my calculator to figure that out. And just counting, it looks like my min if i this is one two three four and then five my minimum is definitely between three and five somewhere so let me go to my calculator and i'm going to move to the app all right let's get out of this this was the last thing i was working on let me go to my y equals and clear this out so we're going to put in our function three x squared and then we're going to go x minus three and then i'm going to go x minus five all right, and let me hit graph. Now I'm going to hit zoom 6 or zoom standard just to figure this out. Now I can't see my minimum. And the cool thing about this app is because it's touch screen, I can kind of pinch it. And there is my min. And you can adjust your window if you have the physical calculator. But let's go ahead and find this, this minimum here. Oops, let me go ahead and touch this function. It usually just kind of locks in there. I'm going to go find this minimum somewhere. And again, it's in between an x value of 3 and 5. So let me hit calculate. Let's go to the min. Let's make the left end 0.3, the right end 0.5. And it looks like my minimum is 4.23 and then negative 50.84. So let me go ahead and write that down. So our minimum, I think I saw it at 4.23 and then negative 50.84. And that would mean that my range, my lowest y value, and you can kind of see it here, it's close to negative 50 would be this option. All right, so if I zoom out, oops, let's get all of this in here. There is, wait for it, there we go. There's number two. So I've circled all of the traits and I'm good to go. All right, thanks so much, everyone. Bye.